So today I'm going to be turning a little corner in my office into where I'm going to be starting my seeds starting this month in February. I have a plan to uh, start building, not building, but transforming the old chicken coop that I have into a bigger greenhouse. But for now, I need to start some seeds indoors to get them ready for planting whenever you know, the thread of frost is gone. This is my office area. I have two windows in here. There, the lighting's better. I have two windows in my office and I thought that I would take advantage of all that light and get a little metal shelf, which I have right here, and put it in between those two windows. Lord, this is the one where the sun sets. So this is, this is going to get the evening sun, it's going to get the most sun. Because there's a hill behind my house, so I don't really get a lot of the morning sun, so I'm going to have to, you know, get the evening sun. Uh, but where I have a window on the other side, it gives, you know, light from both angles, so that's good. And I think I might supplement some of that too with some uh, artificial light. I don't know what I'm going to get yet, uh, but I'm going to try that out this year, I've never done that before. In order to get my seed corner going, I need to take my seed starting containers from last year and clean them because they've been out in the weather um, all winter. At least one of them has been feeding my chickens for a couple months. <laughs> I know that's bad, uh, but I'm going to just scrub them with some soap and then maybe spray them with... Um, some peroxide or um, hydrogen peroxide mixture I haven't decided yet but first things first I need to scrub it now I use I started last year and I got a, <clears throat> a soil blocker so a soil blocker is this uh, metal hand thingy that you uh, plop down kind of hard into um, a container of damp soil and then you squeeze it and make um, it makes these little pods, you know, these little soil blocks that have a little like indention in them that you can pop your seeds in there. And that way that helps keep down on uh, having to use plastic and I just think it's nifty. I made specifically with the help of uh, Maverick some little boxes to start to use my uh, soil blocker. They, they are the exact measurement um, that I needed to get the soil blocks in there. So all that old dirt would have been inside of these boxes. Most of that is from the one that was in the chicken coop, which, yeah, that's kind of gross. I'm going to sanitize my, my tub, obviously, very well <laughs> after this. But if I hadn't done that, then all that old soil that um, was left in these boxes some of it could have had, um, you know, mold or diseases or something in it that would have spread to my new plants, and I don't want that, so I want to try to be as safe as possible. I used a Castile soap, which is safe for plants, so if anything was left, you know, on there, if I didn't rinse it off, because, I mean, it's wood, you know, maybe I didn't rinse it as good as I could have, um, but... If the, any soap was left on there, it's not going to hurt anything. They actually use Castile soap in some gardens as a pest, um, to t like to kill pests. So, I did that, and now I am going to show you guys how I use my soil blocker. Thank you. 
I've got my seed starting mix right here, which I have moistened very well. So it is super, like, if you grab it and you squeeze it together, it would like stick in a ball. That's what we want. And I'm gonna take this. Can you see that? Now, I'm going to take my seed blocker. And, you know, normally I would do this outside in like a big tub um, and not this little tiny container, but this works too. And I'm just going to push the seed blocker down into the seed starting mix as like, you know, with as much strength as I got, which ain't much, but that it'll, it'll do. <laughs> so. But, and then I can see that, you know, it has, it has filled up all of those holes really well. Now I'm going to take my box here that I've made specifically to fit my soil blocker. And I'm going to just get down in here. See how it fits just perfectly in there? And I'm going to squeeze the handle as I pull up. And then I'll show you what we're left with here. We have these awesome little squares. They're all the same size. They have they already have the little seed holes poked in them. And that's going to help me know where the plants are. That's going to help me keep them all separated, just perfect as can be. And um, it, it helps whenever you're, you're pulling the plant up and they're not like a jumbled mess in there. So that helps keep me organized and the seeds organized. And it's just, it's better. <laughs> it's better this way. But now you don't have to have the soil blocker to do this. No, not at all. That's not what I'm saying. You can absolutely just fill this container up with dirt, make a couple of little lines, throw your seeds in and go. But this makes my OCD brain happy. <laughs> so that's how we're going to do it. So here's our finished soil blocks. They've got the little indention in them, so that's perfectly, like all, all of our seeds are going to be perfectly spaced. This made 40 pods, so this will start 40 plants. This little tiny, and I'll measure and let you know what the dimensions to this is. And it fits perfectly, like two fit perfectly on this top shelf. I don't know that two would fit down here because of the sides here, but this little metal shelf I just picked up at a department store. Okay, so today I'm going to be planting some poppy seeds. These are a florist pepper box poppy from Baker Creek Seeds. And uh, this is a bread seed poppy, so whatever seeds come of this this year, I'll be able to bake with. Um, so poppy seeds, you'll notice it's cold. Well, you probably don't know it's cold, but I'm wearing a jacket. It's really cold today. We're about to get that cold front that uh, swept across Texas. It's on its way here. They need to freeze for them to germinate. So you want to plant them in late fall, or in early like winter or in the spring while you still got time enough for it to freeze um so i'm just gonna sprinkle these i've got a little area here that i've dug up and disturbed and i'm just gonna sprinkle some of these on top of the dirt and then sprinkle just a little bit of this seed starting mix on top of it just to keep it moist but not too much because I need a little bit of light to come through because they're kind of like lettuce seeds they need a little bit of light to germinate
but I didn't put a whole lot of dirt on top of those seeds. Uh, so they need light to germinate, but you also don't want the seedlings to dry out because if they dry out while they're germinating, they're gonna die just like any other seed. So we want just enough on there to be able to keep them moist and just so little that they can still have some light to, ger to uh, germinate. So earlier in the video, we talked about the soil blocker and using the soil blocker. That was a couple of days ago. And between then and now, I went with my Aunt Jenny to her new house that she is cleaning out and fixing up. And the lady that lived there before gardened. And so in the one of the buildings, I found these. So these are those awesome like hexagon uh, seed starting trays. And I lucked out getting these. But I'm gonna have to wash them, get the spiders out, and use these. I don't normally like to use plastic because I don't like to buy plastic and because you know it it it's usually so thin that it, it, it'll just break every year and you'll just have to keep buying and buying plastic. But these are really thick, heavy duty trays that I think I'm gonna be able to uh, use for a long time. And also they were just going to waste in the um, little outbuilding that she had. So I am completely jazzed about these. Those seed starting trays definitely were not as um, sturdy as I thought they were. Uh, they're a little bit dry rotted from being outside for a while, but they're still good. They were just, terrible to get apart where they've been stacked together for so long so note to future self do not stack these back together if you plan on reusing them <laughs> other than that there are a few moths flying out everywhere uh, but i have them in the bathtub soaking in just a little bit of bleach water uh just to sanitize them because they weren't super dirty like i don't need to scrub them but I do want to make sure that there's nothing on there that's going to make my plants sick. Follow me back into my bath. I would be doing all this outside, but it is pretty chilly. So what I did is I took my bag of seed starting mix right here and I poured water in it. Why? Because I need it to be pre-moistened because this stuff comes so dry and it's so light that if you were to just pack the seed trays with the dirt, and then the seeds and then try to water it your um seeds and your dirt are just going to float to the top uh, so you need that moisture already in the dirt for it to be able to wick up water next time because it's just that dry so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this mix and i'm going to start filling up these trays that i have here and since i've already got the bathtub dirty that's where i'm going to do it <laughs> So I've decided that I'm going to start my peppers first because they were first on my list and I have yet to get them started. I think on my calendar I was supposed to start them two days ago, so I'm not too far behind. <laughs> but I've got all kinds of varieties that I'm going to try this year. Last year was the first year that I ever had any luck with peppers. And the only ones that I grew were jalapenos and uh, just a regular bell green pepper um i think it was the california wonder pepper this year i got all kinds of different ones and i'm gonna plant them in one of the plastic seed trays that i just washed the deeper ones the reason that you want to check your frost date and get them started within the time frame of transplanting is because if you start your peppers and then you put them out even if you don't have the threat of frost and they get cold like for a few days they they get pretty chilly not freezing not enough to chill them but chilly it's gonna stunt their uh growth and development a little bit 
and it's going to take it longer to bounce back from that. You just want to be sure, for one, that uh, your frost isn't going to kill it and that you don't have to keep it inside for for too long to where they're going to get super leggy, super big, where you're going to have to uh, pot them up and then you're not going to have enough space, enough window space, stuff like that. You just want to check that. I'm hoping that I'm not starting them too early. Uh, but I, I timed it out on, on the calendar and hopefully we're, we're going to uh, be right on schedule. So these are the three peppers that I'm going to be planting right now. I've never had any of these before. I got a shishito pepper, which is a Japanese pepper. This one, um, so this isn't hot, really. I don't think so. This is a like kind of a sweet pepper. This one is the hot one that I got. And then this one is a habanada. That's probably backwards. These are the ones that I'm going to plant right now. I've got some other ones that were gifted to me from my friend Amber. And I'm gonna plant those too. I just gotta get the name tags. The name tags written down. So a Chinese five color pepper, a Tabasco pepper, Buena Molada pepper, and, and oh, I almost forgot the one that I'm super excited about. Baker Creek was sold out of these, so I went on Etsy and found them um, on a place called 86 Peppers. And this is the Sugar Rush Cream Pepper, which is a, uh, a sweet, spicy, like super interesting hot pepper. So yeah, okay, so I got two hot peppers. I totally forgot about this one. And I think, actually, I have another order coming in the mail. It just hasn't got here yet. <laughs> so whenever I get those planted, I'll let you know what those are too. Now, we just wait, <laughs> which is the hardest part. The, I didn't get all the ones planted today that I wanted to. I am getting the, the seed order in the mail this week, and then I will finish planting the rest of the peppers when they get here. I am super excited. This is always such a, a magical time of year because it's still cold outside. Peppers take a long time to grow. They take a long time to get started, but... Even though it's cold and dreary and wet and gross outside right now, there's new life. There's new life being created. Not only in the sea tray, but all those little farm babies being born. But also, I would like to congratulate my niece. She had her first baby last night. A little girl, so I am a great aunt. So congratulations, Marlena and uh, Michael. Um, and welcome to the world and happy birthday Maya Rose. I am super proud and Super happy and I just want to share that with you guys. Oh wait before you go. I Wanted to show you something exciting that's happening Hang on. Hopefully you'll be able to see this <laughs> Oh my goodness That definitely was not that big yesterday. Wow. It's working. Do you know what that is? That's a baby goose. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna get it back in the incubator now. <laughs> Let's check this one before we go. Let's see. Oh my gosh, hang on. Can you see it? Oh my gosh. I'm so happy. I'm so excited. I really hope that they make it. I might have to go live on Facebook now. Like, I might have to go show you guys live. I'm so excited. Yay! Okay, on that note, happy February and happy spring. Almost, it's not happy spring. Happy late winter, almost spring. Happy, 
I don't know what, but it's happy. So I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye.